the prosecutor, even though this clearly is not a criminal proceeding, is asking Dr. Ford all kinds of questions about what happened before and after, but basically not during the attack. The prosecutor should know that sexual assault survivors often do not remember peripheral information, such as what happened before or after the traumatic event. And yet, she will persist in asking these questions, all to undermine the memory and basically the credibility of Dr. Ford. But we all know Dr. Ford's memory of the assault is very clear. Dr. Ford, the Republicans prosecutor has asked you all kinds of questions about who you called and when, asking details that would be asked in a cross-examination of a witness in a criminal trial. But this is not a criminal proceeding. This is a confirmation proceeding. I think I know what she's trying to get at. So I'll just ask you very plainly, Dr. Ford, is there a political motivation for your coming forward with your account of the assault by Brett Kavanaugh? No, and I'd like to reiterate that, again, I was trying to get the information to you while there was still a list of other Thank you. what looked like equally qualified candidates. And yet they're not here to testify. Dr. Ford, I'd like to join my colleagues who have thanked you for coming forward today. And uh, I and we all admire you for what you're doing. And I understand why you have come forward. You wanted us and the American people to know mm -hmm. what you knew about the character, the character of the man we are considering for a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court. I want to take a moment also to note the significant personal sacrifices you've made to come forward to share your traumatic experience with us and the American people. You've had to move, you've had death threats, all manner of, of uh, basically re-victimization uh, experiences have come your ways. But by coming forward, you have inserted the question of character into this nomination and hopefully back into American life, and rightly so. We should be made to face the question of who it is we are putting in positions of power and decision making in this country. We should look the question square in the face. Does character matter? Do our values, our real values about what is right and what is wrong, and about whether we treat our fellow human beings with dignity and respect, do they matter anymore? I believe they do, and I believe the reaction we have seen to this coverage right now and your courage all over this country shows us that we're not alone. You're not alone. That women and men all across America are disgusted and sick and tired of the way basic human decency has been driven from our public life. The president admits on tape to assaulting women. He, sep he separates children from their parents. He takes basic health care protections from those who need them most. He nominates and stands behind a man who stands credibly accused of a horrible act. I again want to thank you for coming forward.